Welcome back to another Journal Worthy Journey. We're uh, in, at just outside of St. Louis now, this beautiful little park. Love it here. And I just want to take the opportunity to sit down, film a little bit of A-roll for this next video. Uh, this next video has nothing to do with this area. We're actually going to be finishing out what we bring you previously, and that was Montana. Man, we love that place. One of the things that we carry around with us as we're traveling around is this backpack. What's contained in it? Frisbee golf discs. Ah, not too bad, not too bad for the second throw. Basket's just a little bit further that way and a long ways from where we started. Cheap and easy sport to get into. These discs are oh, relatively right cheap. You can go buy used ones if you go to like a Frisbee golf store, like a plate against sports or something. Yeah, not too bad. There are some private places, but uh, yeah, we look around when we're in different places, when we have time. So we've gotten out a handful of times to go and throw the old Frisbee golf disc, Kalispell. There's a few different courses around it. We went down to Lawrence Park and there's a decent little one right there. Had a good time. Just thought we'd mention that. Super cheap and easy way to just kind of get out and enjoy some of those nicer parks and all these different hey, random areas. Nice throw. And, and it's, yeah, it's fun. Just play casually, walk around, throw, throw them into the basket. You don't have to keep score. We don't keep score. Just have fun. Great little thing to do. Um, so yeah, we've done that there. Did it a few other places. It's a good time. And uh, we thought we'd just mention that. There's no way to zone out to that movie out there. Okay. Another thing that's really fun to do is take advantage of those lakes. We've not done a whole lot of that. I wish, I wish we were getting out more on the lakes and, and having a good time. Flathead Lake though, man, that place is pretty. We've already shown you some of the video footage of it. Uh, you, you've seen just like from drone shots when we're coming into the area and, and stuff along as we're driving along. Um, the watercolor stuff are stunning. We really wanted to take advantage of that beautiful lake and get out on it and they have rentals. Uh, of course, they've got kayaks and canoes and those kind of rentals, but they also have power sport rentals and we decided to rent a couple of jet skis. Unfortunately for us, it was a little bit of a cloudy day. In fact, it kind of rained a little bit at one point. So some of this footage is not the prettiest of the views that we've had. I really wish the sun was out brighter because that watercolor is amazing when it's all fully lit. But hey, it's still a jet ski. We had a really good time cruising around, uh, went out a good distance, came back. We did have to take it a little bit careful on the jet skis because Taylor was still dealing with recovering from her fractured rib. He's going in circles around me. Ah, oh, rude! <laughs> so, didn't want to go bouncing too hard on the water for her and, uh, you know, aggravate things. In fact, we even came back a little bit early ahead of our return time, but had a good time out on the lake. I really wouldn't mind going back and running like a pontoon boat or even jet skis again at some point, but yeah, like the pontoon, right? Party barge, just go out and have a good time on the lake. It's, it's such a cool lake. The views are so pretty here. So, so, so pretty. I, I love the little islands that are out there on it. And uh, yeah, the watercolor and just the surroundings. It's a great little lake. Speaking of lakes, we also went up to the Whitefish area, which is another town that's just past Kalispell. So not very far from the area. Uh, you're talking about west from Glacier and this area's got some mountains and stuff around it, and it's got its own lake, Whitefish Lake. So we drove past the town initially, went and uh, just were driving around the lake and saw that there was a, a little park. Turns out there's a couple of small little parks that'll give you actually access to go down to the water. Uh, there are fees, right? Park, it's state park fees. Not that pricey, it's like $5, but I don't have change. You just gotta put in an envelope. So you know, bring, bring your small bills if you're gonna go there and check those out, but uh, it, it is at least an opportunity to get down there to the water and go swimming in the lake and stuff. But I, I think the bigger deal for that lake is having the power toys to go out on it. Of course, we didn't have that, but we saw plenty of people out there enjoying it, skiing, tubing, just cruising around on their boats, having a good time. Uh, we were a little bit jealous, but man, we love that water. It's incredible just coming to the north and seeing these super clear lakes because it is not like that in Dallas. We should have brought swimsuits because it's hot out here. 
and it's really nice. And we can't go in the lake because we didn't bring anything. Yeah. Oh well. What are you gonna do? We just enjoyed the, the visit that day and then drove back down, kind of checked out the, the main little shopping district area in the middle of Whitefish. And it's kind of a neat little area. It's artsy, right? They've got some art shops and cafes and uh, yeah, a little bit of food, dining, uh, and go into different galleries, and see some pretty fancy stuff there. So coming back on another day, we went up to Whitefish Mountain. Uh, there's a ski resort there. To get up to the top of Whitefish Mountain, you can take a chairlift up during the summer. She definitely wants a rest. Okay, coming down, watch your head, watch your legs, watch the camera. And there you go. All right, have a good one. We'll see you in a little bit. Appreciate it. And those chairlifts can bring bikes. We didn't have any. Uh, I think you can rent them there in the area. Interesting. You riding on up. We just were riding going there to up. take a look around. And like I say, once you get up that chairlift and you get the views at the top, like it was surprising just how far you could see on a clear day. Okay, so I think that over there uh -huh. is Flathead Lake. Probably, yeah. The valley area that's down below around Kalispell and that whole area is actually pretty flat. So it's this super open view down on the south and like eastern side versus behind you, which is more or less looking towards Canada. So you've got the mountain that you're on and you're just looking back over the other direction into just this mountain range that kind of runs up to the border. And uh, yeah, it was, it was really, really pretty. You can actually just hike down, even if you don't have bikes, but we weren't gonna be doing that either. Again, just dealing with the Taylor's rib and stuff and not being prepared for hiking down a mountain. We weren't gonna just suddenly wing that one without looking into it a little bit further, but uh, I really wouldn't mind if we're in the area again at some point to, uh, to rent bikes and go cruising down on bikes. If not, look at some of the, the hiking trail options to up and down the mountain. Uh, it was definitely a really pretty thing and enjoyed our little ride up and down. I can't say that it's like a super worth, like must, must go see and do type situation. But if you got time to kill, like, yeah, it was, it was pretty. It was neat going up there and just kind of taking a look around. Uh, this is why we're kind of just bringing you this whole series of things like real quick like this. Like most of these things, not that big of a deal, right? They're just kind of the quick other little items that we've done in the area. Now, the big item that's in the area to go do is Glacier, Glacier National Park. Wow, let me just say, Glacier is one of our favorite national parks. This place is absolutely stunning. Just the scale, the size of the views and things that you'll get in Glacier. It's also got a huge lake there, a really pretty lake called Lake McDonald. That was the first thing that we went and experienced on one day. Uh, we specifically went that day just to kind of check out the uh, Apgar Village area and Lake McDonald. Now, Apgar Village is this little village area that has shopping, they've got dining, and they've got some lodging there as well. Uh, we weren't taking advantage of basically any of that at the time. A little bit of looking at some of the shopping stuff, but uh, yeah, that's all your kind of typical tourist things, uh, shirts and souvenirs and, and whatnot. Cute little area. Some of the lodging is right at the lake, but the big draw of that area to me really is like the lake. Look at this inn right here. That's on the water. That's the place to stay. Yeah. Really. There are rentals to be able to get out on it. Kind of wish we'd taken advantage of that. The lake's gorgeous. It's clear. So part of me is really tempted about looking into a rental at some point and doing like a, a like a paddle board or kayak or something. Could be nice. But it's very peaceful here. And it doesn't seem overly crowded. Like, sure, there are people, but, you know, it's not that crowded. But Lake McDonald's set way back from what I think is the main attraction, and that's the going to the Sun Road. 
the going to the sun road has a recommended and I don't know, maybe occasionally enforced maximum length of 21 feet. Our truck is 22, like, yeah, we could have maybe squeezed by, but it's also a dually, it's really wide. And to me, that's almost as important as the length on it. We didn't take our truck. We went to Kalispell Airport and actually rented a car instead for doing the drive. Yeah, it's interesting. We have to rent a car just to go to Glacier. <gasps> But I've always been curious about driving a Forerunner. Well, now you'll so know. So now I get to. And I like little SUV type cars like this, so. I feel so tiny right now though. <laughs> Not real. I'm used to our giant truck. So in order to get to the Going to the Sun Road, you're gonna pass by Lake McDonald. You'll drive for several miles, uh, kind of turning to the right, not going to the Apgar area, but the opposite direction. And you're gonna drive along the lake for, I think, several miles. I don't know exactly how long, but Quite a, quite a long distance along the lake. Eventually what you'll get to is the lake will just kind of disappear off to your left and now you'll be going along a river. So I'm glad that this road is, you know, close up and along all these lines and along all these rivers and stuff. So yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a lot prettier than our little sneak preview we got a week ago. Yeah. So we were able to stop and enjoy a few of the views of the river along the way and also just the drive as you're going down you're you're kind of in this like row of trees that uh you know just winding around and you can tell that there's big mountains up the sides you can kind of see going up but it's, it's not the same thing as like the zion where they're like right here on you um you know they're swept back a little bit further and it's just big big trees you can tell it's it's this big field and then you'll eventually get to the part where you really get to see this view. So going down, after a while, you'll, you'll hook around and then start actually climbing up. And once you start climbing up, this is where the views just start to just open wide, wide up. That's a long way, that's a long way down. Of course this would be packed right here. You can see that there's a lot of little pull-offs, very small, like can hold like a car or so. If those are all looking full, don't worry about it. Shortly after you get going uphill, there's going to be a longer section, and this is where I would actually recommend pulling off. This is what we did. We enjoyed our little lunch that we brought with us at this point, and there was a couple of long sections that give an awesome view of what you've just driven through. Well worth coming to Montana to see Glacier. Yeah. We started driving down this road and of course it goes along the river which was beautiful and there's some little minor falls or rapids and things and we looked at some of that but what that road does is it continues to go along this river and eventually you're looking up and you're seeing the big mountains and all that sort of stuff well eventually the road continues to lead on and you really get a view of what is the road is between so the road is between these giant peaks. And we can actually see this road from here, from this vantage point. You can see it in the river. You can see where it turns and goes along here. And I think this is where we stopped at some of the falls and things like that. Because then the road keeps going. And eventually you get back in the distance there where it turns you start winding your way up along this uh, mountainside here and so now that we're a good distance up it you get some nice stopping points this is 
kind of towards the upper end of a few sections of really big stopping points. And we really get a chance to have this incredible look over the park from here. It's lunchtime. We made some turkey sandwiches for us. We got some chips and some drinks. Figured this is a pretty, pretty view. So why not enjoy some lunch with it? Yeah. Get to just sit here on the wall, get a little grub, enjoy the views, and keep on going. Yep. It's the plan. So after enjoying our lunch, we kept driving up the road and taking in plenty of the, these awesome views that you just get going up through this. Lots of waterfalls and different things going on. Ice is everywhere. They, they actually don't open the Going to the Sun Road until fairly late into the summer. Okay, I'm glad this road opened. I'm really glad this road opened because this actually lets you see Glacier. The reason being that there's huge amounts of these ice flows that just cover the road and they're constantly having to try to dig out. And then of course those can just cover back up again with a little bit of a storm or whatever. So I, I'm sure it's it's a total hassle. Yeah, so I suppose I may have had to do some digging to, to be able to get this out. But we really appreciate their effort because it's such an awesome drive. So be wary about exactly when you're going. It may not be open until August. It may not be open until the middle of August. Are you getting nervous? <laughs> it's a little close. A little tight here and there. A little tight. So as you keep going up, you'll eventually get to Logan's Pass. This is really the peak of it, and that's where you're gonna start going back down the, the backside. The backside is a different kind of view. And what this will eventually lead down to is another incredible lake that's in the area. St. Mary's Lake. <laughs> I'm thinking I wish we could jump in, because that'd be really nice. <laughs> no, but I don't think that a camera is gonna do justice to just how aquamarine and blue this really is. Oh, Brent, having to be the rebel. What I encouraged. I'm a bad influence. Good grief. Alright, you want a photo? Now, you could keep going down the road at this point and head out through the other side of the park. And I know that there's more stuff down that direction, but this was kind of our turnaround point. After this, we just pretty much drove all the way back, uh, taking in far fewer stops at that point and, uh, and enjoying the drive.
that was it for Glacier for us on this particular trip. Uh, even though all we really did was just drive around and look at things, like we loved that part. It was so pretty, like just the scale and the size and the beauty of that place. It's a really pretty park when you're there in that early to mid-summer section. I think when you get there later in the year and more of that's melted off, it would be a different experience. I'd say it's worth it coming here. You get the chance and the going to the Sun Road is open, take it. Anyways, that's gonna do it for us in the Montana area. Uh, after this, we headed on over to Spokane and Washington and got a whole lot of more stuff coming up in that. Thanks for joining us on this Journal Worthy journey and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. That is on my bucket list of things to go see. Ooh. I'm done. <laughs> is that a bee? Yeah. <laughs> Now, to get over to Abgar Village, B. Okay, bro. Taylor thinks I'm taking a photo. <laughs> so, at St. Larry. St. Larry's make. You could look on editing this, by the way. Um, have fun with that. Since I'm swinging the camera every which direction, you probably can chop this one little video that's three minutes so far up into like 10. Okay. So good luck. This guy's just cruising around. I like his style though, he's looking like pajamas on a freaking trike. It's not bad. All right, so why are people honking? People are honking because it's written on the outside of this car over here that it's uh, someone's 50th wedding anniversary and it says, please honk. Oh, <laughs> so everybody is honking. Awesome. Happy 50th to them. It's amazing. Yeah. Hey, we'll make it we only have 40 years to go, man. Yeah. Easy. Easy.